Hello everyone and welcome to Dyson Sphere Program, Rise of the Dark Fog. That's my first zoom in, pretty cool, huh? So we've probably got some fresh meat in the fray, huh? And that also means learn through the game as much as possible and get completely frustrated at stage yellow. That's understandable. Stage blue was just one step factory, easy, right? Stage red, also one step production, easy peasy. And stage yellow is, I think, up to four steps? Yeah, that's quite a jump. But don't worry, I'm not here to lick your tears. I'm here to help. Besides, I'm struggling through yellow cubes myself. We might as well learn together, no? It's always about the energy. The wind turbines is not doing it for me. And I'm not going to get into solar panels. But fusion power? Oh yeah, this is something I want to get into. Now I know that some of you are probably saying, Oh! It's only 250 yellows, you can just farm it off for dark fog drops. Shut up, I'm doing a video here. I need to show some reason of doing yellow cubes to you guys. It could have been anything. Now obviously there are different rates of yellow cubes that you can make. Uh, here I'm just going for something simple and trying to get uh, 60 per minute. Nice to know that I made this blueprint like quite a while ago and it's still around, but um, yeah, there's something a little bit off here. Ah, uh, yes. One, the blueprint's outdated. It usually is every time I revisit. And two, why am I designing this in the middle of a war zone? So we're going to be doing this in sandbox mode. It's totally fine to do these designs in-game, but for me, it's a bit distracting to do this while there's fighting right at my doorstep. Also, there's plenty of room to build here, too. Relatively speaking, yellow cubes don't take much room, but you simply don't know how big your next design can be until it's too big. Believe me, I know. Okay, who left the design here and didn't clean up after themselves? My goodness. There, that's better. I like my stuff to be as clean and tidy as possible. I'll also be using an online factory calculator. Regardless of your math ability or opinion, uh, factory calculators are a huge uh, time saver. In particular, Factorial Lab by Doug Broad is one of the best that I have seen so, so far, or if not the best. And the amazing part is, from the looks of it, it's already been updated with the uh, latest updates. All the new items, recipes, it's pro absolutely profound. And I definitely encourage uh, taking a look at it. I'll leave a link below. I won't cover much of how to use it, but basically I just put down structure matrix at a rate of 60 per minute and everything needed is uh, put down below. Also I'm going to address a pretty creeping elephant in the room, uh, proliferation also known as spraying. We're going to put all of our stuff through spray coaters that pretend green color to uh, get a mix of extra product and factory speed up bonuses. Yes, it adds some compactness, albeit uh, more complexity to the factory. And yes, I'm going to do it here. And yes, if you're new to this factory mechanic, then you're going to learn now. Because that's the eighth rule of DSP Club, or something like that. If you see it turn, you're going to learn. Ugh, that was so corny. All of this to say, we are just basically getting a list of the number of factories needed for this particular production chain. And I do have to admit, I am playing with the spray options a little more than usual. Usually at this point of the game, you can't go wrong with uh, extra product spraying to save resources. But here, I just want my chain to be as small as possible, so I'm going to play around with it a little bit soon. Looks like we'll be putting out 38 factories. For comparison, without spraying, we would probably be putting out around 50 factories and a bit more resources to produce at that same rate. So that's basically a 25% discount. Also, it's very helpful to leave memos on the belts on, so you can see right on the hand what uh, items are supposed to go where. And I should also mention that the number of factories uh, required for each of the items are also uh, non-integer, so in this case we just uh, need to round up. These off-ratio chains become more and more unacceptable at uh, larger scales. But this is just my first 60 yellow cubes per minute, and I don't intend to, uh, you know, copy and paste this over and over. Naturally, we'll start with the yellow cubes all the way at the top, and we'll work our way down. Starting with titanium crystal. Here, I'll mark the inputs below the factories and the products above the factories. 
This should be nice because the products on the top should link up with the inputs on the, on the bottom. And I'm having my inputs run from left to right and the products are running from right to left. You'll see why in a very short while. And let's mark the ends of the belts uh, with what's going in it like so. Yeah, marking the belts with uh, the items is definitely one of the best quality of life improvements to this game. Not as amazing as Blueprints. Blueprints is another level altogether, but definitely uh, good, nonetheless. And then we just link these up with sorters. Uh, some of you, if not all of you, have seen this before. Oh, right, I forgot the yellow cube belt. That's what we're here for, right? And then I'll just nudge these titanium crystals over to the right. Not only it looks pretty to me, but I also want the spray coders to line up as well. And next, we'll stick in four chemical plants, uh, making organic crystals. Here, there are three inputs, but the concept is still the same. The inputs uh, running below the factories and the outputs uh, going out of top. Here, I'm kind of gauging which of the products should go closest to the factory. This is because sorters slow down more as they're further away from the factory. So here I see that uh, two plastic is uh, needed the most. So we're going to put plastic the closest to the factory, uh, followed by the water and uh, refined oil being second. Okay, next is uh, three chemical plants pumping out plastic. And here it's uh, just two inputs to make the plastic, uh, refined oil and graphite. Also note that we now have uh, two two steps in the chain that uh, require the same thing, refined oil. So what that means is that we're going to have our refined oil uh, being split into uh, both these inputs. Looking forward to that. Okay, and next in our production chain is uh, titanium ingots uh, produced by smelters. And diamond, which of course comes from graphite. Of course we know this. Who, who wouldn't? And graphite, which uh, comes from coal, is uh, also being put down here. You see how the uh, the graphite output and the graphite input lines up right next to each other? If anything, this is one particular reason I like doing this uh, kind of design process. And now it's time to put down refined oil. Oh my gosh, refined oil. It was the bane of my existence. I mean, have you seen what these factories look like? There are so many ways to lay this out, and none of them is really wrong. But then again, none of them are really right either. Well, there's my take on it. It's still the same, of course. The, uh, the crude oil is being inputted and the refined oil is being outputted. And of course, we end up with our first waste product, the hydrogen, because that's not being used anywhere in this chain. So, yeah, so basically we're just going to sweep that stuff under the rug somewhere or tank in this case. And last but not least, we add in the factories for the spray. I like how the spray factories are at the bottom of the list. This kind of makes sense because, well, at least in this case, the spray that's produced at the bottom of the chain can be sent through spray coders all the way up to the top of the chain. But enough of me talking about it, let's actually do it. There's our Mark II spray. And there's our Mark 1 spray. Notice that the Mark 2 spray also needs uh, diamonds along with the yellow cubes. So we're going to have lots of fun branching that off. And that's it. That's all the uh, factories that we need to produce the yellow cubes at 60 per minute. No, wait a second. Almost all of them. Uh, turns out I'm missing a factory for Mark 1 spray. Easy enough to fix. Now that the factories are laid out, I'm going to get into the fun part, which is wiring up all the inputs and outputs here. Or as some of you guys like to call it, spaghetti. I'll start with putting in a spray coater here, just to see what it looks like. As my rule of thumb, I only spray inputs and end products. But then again, you are more than welcome to take the spray all the things motto, literally. I think I can break down the spaghetti into three categories. The first is the raw inputs. That can be extended out as you know far to the left as possible. We don't have to worry about that. The second are outputs that are only used for one input. As you can see, it's a very short link up, so no problem there. And as I thought, the hard part will be 
outputs that are used in like two or more steps in the chain. Basically doing these uh, Hail Mary belts over to the uh, other parts of the chain. And while it is possible to go splitterless with uh, any kind of setup, I'm going to save myself the trouble. And I'm really loving how these bridges are automatically made. Those of you who are here long enough to see my bridge kit video, you'll remember how tedious it is to uh, make such uh, tight bridges. But yeah, there's no belt tricks or belt sorcery being done here. We just want to get this uh, draft chain over and done with. This long belt that you see going through all the chains is for the spray. Putting in the long raw for the uh, refined oil. If I see here correctly, this entire chain needs four raw inputs. Coal, crude oil, titanium ore, and water. Wow, that's it? The graphite is used for both diamond and plastic, so we're going to set up a splitter to uh, make this easier. One belt for the energetic graphite and the other one for the plastic. And we do the same splitter shenanigans for the diamond, as that is going over to Mark II spray and yellow cubes. And a splitter for the refined oil. A splitter over belt steps when and just like that we have our first spaghetti mess isn't that nice and you can't have your game of Dyson Sphere program without shoving your hydrogen byproduct over into a tank one thing I did fail to notice in the calculator is that we need two belts of uh, raw coal going into the chain so I'm going to cheat a little bit here and use an automatic piler to uh, fulfill that role automatic pilers basically jam two belts into one which is a glorious solution for high throughput problems at this stage of the game. A simple 2 to 1 piler which uh, goes into a splitter suits the job quite nicely. I've marked down our 4 and uh, <clears throat> half uh, inputs and now let's uh, put down a test station to uh, load these factories up and see if it actually works. Unfortunately when it comes to testing these uh, sprayed setups it takes a while for these uh, spray coders to uh, buffer up. So I might have to wait a little bit to uh, see if I got the right output. I think overall there were only uh, three uh, corrections that I had to do to, uh, to finish this up. I think the first one was something with the, uh, the coal inputs. Um, that one was uh, fixed up. The second was I was using a belt for hydrogen and another belt for refined oil, but forgetting to use filtered sorters to make sure they're sorted appropriately. Here's what the filtered sorters look like. Did I say there was a third issue? No, I don't think so. I don't remember now at this point. And with that, we got ourselves 63 yellow cubes per minute. Woo! And with that, I have myself a trickle science of yellow cubes when farming dark fog is not enough. And for you, you've seen an example of the black box process and hopefully won't be daunted as much at this stage. Believe me, it gets harder later. Hope you guys like this video. I'll check you later.